This is going to be the most important lesson that you should be having, but 99% of you will not have had a lesson out here on the golf course. You'll come out, you'll play exactly as you do, stand in the middle of the tee, hit it as hard as possible, and more than likely, potentially lose a golf ball or be losing shots where you don't need to. If you can hear a lot of dings in the background, then that is Dave's Apple Watch that he doesn't know how to put on silent. But we're out here today giving Dave a course lesson. Because one big thing that I see people go for is everybody goes for a lesson with this club. How many lessons have you had with your driver and you still can't get off the tee? Then maybe you're not getting your course management right and that could save you a lot of shots this year and get that handicap down. And in comes Dinging Dave. Stopped it now. The, Sussed it. Have you figured out how to put it on silent? Yeah. Good stuff, Dave. Right, Dave. So, so this is... If it, this is course management, you knowing me, should I be taking a driver here? This is the thing, Dave. So we're out here on this hole, a long par four, 392 yards, stroke index three. Can Dave reach in two? Highly unlikely. He's got to hit two of his <coughs> Sunday best to be able to get there. And we know that his driver's not his strong point at the moment. He has been hitting it better, but would we potentially change? Guys, if you're on the golf course and you don't trust a golf club, then maybe it's not the one you should be using and you should leave it in your bag. Dave's been hitting the ball better and that's why we would allow him to hit driver out here today. But if Dave had a club that he was obviously favoring a lot more like his five wood that he does have in there, there is no problem <coughs> going down to your five wood, because if you hit that better, the strike's better, and the ball goes further, then it's a good club to have. We wasn't going to hit another one, but Dave's out there, he's fired up for his five wood, and he's in. So we'll watch Dave hit his five wood. I thought that's what you're trying to get me to do, Chris. Well, no, because you have been hitting your driver better, so when you've got, obviously, confidence with your driver, we do want you to hit the longest club in the bag, and that's where you may, obviously, have been for driver lessons, but you have to also make sure your driver is correctly fitted. If you've got the wrong shaft, the wrong setup, that could also be hindering your strikes. So, better ball flight there, turning over just into the rough. If we go and look at distance-wise, I don't think we there's much in it, Chris. We can start to see which one is better. But there's one in the fairway, there is one in the rough. So really, which one should he be choosing? So guys, obviously there for Dave. Dave was just saying he might as well hit his five wood because the strike was better. But obviously there, if Dave was to misstrike that five wood ever so slightly, he would quickly lose more distance. Because after all, he didn't hit the driver perfect and it's gone the same distance as a good stroke five wood. So this is where you've got to think, guys, you do want to hit your longest club if you are confident and you are gonna be able to get some kind of strike. But if you're not, put it away and stick to something that's gonna get you in the fairway. Play for your shots. Dave gets a shot here. He doesn't need to try and muscle it up there in two. He just needs to make sure that he's getting on the green in three. He's gonna give himself a good chance of two putting and walk off here. This is a hole for me, which you would class as a red light hole. It's very unlikely that you're gonna get a birdie or extremely rare and even for a par you've got to really be hitting it well and in winter at the moment and when you start your season it's probably going to be wet underfoot and obviously you're not going to get the optimum distance out of your clubs so take your medicine play it as a red hole because again it's not something that you are expecting to birdie or gain a shot on and then you'll start to be able to take advantage of your green holes and start to manage your rounds better to lower your scores. So guys, we can see we've got to Dave's five wood in the rough, obviously there straight away be a, a tougher shot. I'd say there's five yards in this, so not much, but obviously with a missed strike, the driver has still gone a little bit further. From here now, we've got to go for a club that Dave's confident with. He's not gonna get there, but we want to get as close as possible. And he has been striking that five wood well off the ground. So I think five wood will be the club. So five wood here for Dave, obviously he's not gonna get there, but he's just gonna play up the right hand side of the fairway, give himself a good shot in. But guys, have you asked about having a playing lesson or have you ever had a playing lesson? This is something that I think can save 90% of golfers a lot of shots. Obviously there'll still be people out there saying that they will just still hit driver on every single hole. But if you come out here and plot your way around better on a playing lesson, it can really lower those scores. Just like that, a very easy swing from Dave, up that right hand side, a long way up there, a nice little pitch into the green. And we're gonna be scoring better. How's your head cover, Dave? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's still alive. 
And if you're going for a playing lesson, guys, then please do make sure to get there and warm up before. Obviously, hit some shots, because if your pro can only do three holes, maybe, as a playing lesson, then you might not be warm by the end of your three holes, for example. Although that might be a true reflective of what happens on the golf course, <laughs> just like Dave with his Mars bar and a cup of coffee. So think about that, guys. Or try and arrange a nine-hole playing lesson. If you've got the time and the pro's got the time, then it is well worth it. You might need to do that once. It gives you a lot of insights on different shots that you don't see out on the golf course. We know on the driving range, a lot of the times, you're just hitting the same shot. You've got a perfect lie, you're off a mat. We all know you hit two wedges, you feel warm, and then you hit 98 drivers. So you're not really playing shots that you do get out on the golf course. So if you can get out here with a pro, show you the ropes, then that is a fantastic thing to do. And comment below, guys, obviously, do you want to see myself and Dave do that on a lot of golf courses in and around the area of where we live? Not Southern S, like Dave keeps saying, we'll pop to Southern S, which we'll is four nip. and a half hours we'll just away. Nip to Southern S. Nip, we'll just nip to Southern S. like four and a half hours, isn't it? Yeah, just four and a half hours. So comment below, guys, you want to see Dave get out here on the golf course, talk through some course management, and get him lowering those scores with his new clubs. So how far have we left ourselves, Dave? It's 70 yards to the centre of the green. 70 yards, tricky pin here, all tricky pins today here at Woolley. I think Stu's been out. He loves a good tricky pin, does Stu. So, fantastic condition again here at Woolley Park, guys. All striped up, no messing around, even with the weather conditions we've recently been having. But what club day? Pitchy wedge? No, I'm going approach wedge at about shoulder height. So, Dave knows his positions for these kinds of shots. Obviously, we want to go. Think about it, it's not all having to be full shots. How many times I see people from here grab the 60 degree out, grab the 56, send it up into orbit, hit the 730 flight going to Malaga, and then it comes down short. If we can control that in, we can get a ball. If we can control that in just like that and get a better ball flight, we can get that closer to the hole. So just a little bit of a dip near the flag there, but that looks a good distance just under the hole. Now let's talk putting. So just under the pin there from Dave, so it was a nice swing, launched good, didn't hit the Malaga flight from 7.30. That is in a good position. Left himself an uphill putt. Again, more luck than judgment with that, but Dave's obviously there aimed for the middle of the green as well. If we'd have gone for this flag, there's a big ridge there to the right that falls away on these nicely iron greens. So he's just hit the middle. If we hit the middle of the green on every single hole, I think it was Tiger who said it, you're going to be able to put to every single flag position and have a good chance of getting out there of a two putt. Of. If we can two putt more, again, if you think how many three putts or potentially four putts you have around, <laughs> if we can knock those off your scorecard, we can lower that handicap. Shot again, Chris. And if Dave can practice his pace and get the ball to the hole, he could also lower his scores. But it just shows there, obviously, it's that time of the year where you've really got to be putting your time in with putting. Obviously, yes, you might not be able to get on your full greens, but we need to be ready. When the handicap system comes back in, when qualifiers are around, you need to be good to go. Because how many people start the year off, drop a few shots, Dave, and then yeah. they take the rest of the year to get, back, to get, them to, back. To get back to where you were. So guys, we're here on the ninth hole, a par three, which is a, a kind of a hole that catches a lot of golfers out, especially your everyday golfers. You can see by a flyover here, we have a large green, we have three tiers, and we also today have a very tricky pin, as you can see over on the right hand side over the bunker. So a lot of people take on that tricky pin, they either end up short sided on the right or in the bunker. Dave, you've obviously taken into account it's uphill as well. Try to with a seven iron, Chris, That's, this should be plenty. So this is probably a club or two clubs more for the uphill. And that's a good strike. So Dave's aimed at the middle of the green. That's leaked a little bit right and he's on the fringe of the green, short side like we said. But if Dave had gone out the flag, that could have potentially been over there, which puts him in a lot of trouble. So make sure when you're on these par threes, if we aim for the middle, even if your bad shot is a little bit to the right, you're not going to be over there in those trees. So think about it. Think about is it uphill? Don't go pin seeking because this is where a lot of people lose shots. So obviously a tricky par three and again your shots if you've aimed for the middle might not be too far off the edge of the green. You see here Dave's got a, a reasonable chip obviously 
not obviously position A, not where he'd want to be when he aimed for the middle of the green, but still can hopefully limit the damage. Again, obviously it's a par three. Dave Wood, uh, you do get a shot on this par I three. Would actually, get a shot it is there, a Chris, yeah. tricky par three with three tiers on the green. It's pretty. Ooh, good I shot. I got that then. He was trying to reminisce of the bunker shot that I'll put on screen now that he did hole in with. So, guys, Dave's going to put out here, but certainly get out there. You know. So, guys, unfortunately, the camera did die on us there. But Typical, obviously... isn't it? Hold a decent putt for once. Yep, yeah, Dave, hold that putt. But obviously, getting out and doing these kind of things, obviously taking into account, obviously, uphill or downhill there. Also, thinking about aiming for the middle of the green, because if your miss is obviously just to the left or just to the right, you're still going to have a good chance of getting out of there with a par or with a net par, depending, obviously, on your handicap. If you start to go for the flags, you could start to, obviously, lose a lot of shots, lose some balls that you don't need to do. So getting out on the golf course, especially your golf course with your golf Golf pro who's obviously played the golf course a lot he could tell you about some shots that are uphill he could also show you some shots that you don't think of when you're out there on the golf course he might play something totally different that might be a lot easier for you if you can do that this year guys hopefully we can get your handicap down enjoy that golf a little bit more and it might save you some money you don't have to buy new clubs to lower your scores maybe just having a playing lesson could work wonders for you